Good evening, Fernwood. It is your flippant flapper, Neil, and it's time for us to philosophize with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 301 from May 30th, 1977. Last week really sent my feelings through a spin, so I feel like it's time to do an overview. Martha and George Shumway have separated, and now Martha is dating her daughter Kathy Shumway's ex-boyfriend Max Slattery. George has been distracting himself from his loneliness by designing a bug gun. All of last week the Shumways were on a truce until Martha decided who she would be with and she chose Mac. However, there is the omen left by Martha's cousin Standing Cow that says that if she stays with Mac, she and everyone around them will be doomed. And in that household, that leaves Kathy Shumway, who is looking for a new direction in her life. Loretta and Charlie Haggers brought their slightly more civilized wild child boy, Johnny Doe, back from the hospital because the doctors were on strike protesting against malpractice. Dr. Furman was kind enough to come over and offer treatment to JD, and the boy has pulled through, but he certainly seems more depressed than ever. Charlie is starting to think that it might be better to let the boy go back out into nature. Merle and Wanda Jeter have a little lump in their relationship that is named Mary Hartman. Merle went to meet Mary on Tom Hartman's request to discourage her from having an affair, but it does seem like Merle has his own designs on the housewife. Merle is thrilled that Buzz McGregor of the Republican Party is coming to check the Jeters out for a potential 1980 presidential run while Merle's mother, Adeline, is convinced that Merle is a crook. And then we're at the first house on the block where Mary Hartman started the week haunted by thoughts of her former lover, Dennis Foley. Dennis has introduced Mary to Fred and Fiona Foley and he visits and greets Mary with a kiss as often as he can. After Merle saw one of these kisses, he gave her a talking to and a kiss of his own, since Mary is clearly thinking some lustful thoughts. All of Tom's work buddies wanted to help the Hartmans get their relationship back on track, but inadvertently stopped them from doing just that. Then Tom told Charlie that he was ready to give up on keeping the relationship with Mary because he felt she would be happier that way. On the bright side, Kathy Shumway admitted that when she was younger she had a big crush on Tom and she and Wanda Jeter and Tom shared some romantic dances. Last Friday's episode started with Loretta and Charlie debating whether they were doing the right thing with young Johnny Doe. Loretta thinks he'll be fine as long as he's well fed and cared for, but Charlie wonders if it might be better to let JD go off into the forest to become a Bigfoot. And the name Bigfoot puts a shudder into young JD. The Haggers realize that JD used to be able to commune with nature, but now he barely takes note of it and Loretta starts to see things from Charlie's point of view. Merle and Wanda sat craftily crafting and considering how Merle should approach his presidential campaign. Wanda brought up that since Merle likes to sleep with other men's wives that they should campaign on the idea of weakness. Then Buzz and Amanda show up and ask the Jeters if they have any skeletons in their closet and Merle points out Wanda's affair with Dewey but thinks that that's something that can easily be swept under the rug. Amanda suggests as a slogan, Jeter is only human, and Wanda comes back with small pins that say, don't expect much. Merle gets on board with this angle, and then Buzz and Amanda reveal that the Jeter that they want to run for president is Wanda. We then cut to Martha, who is spooked about the omen. She seems to be able to predict things before they happen, like a phone call from Mary or an ironing board falling over or the lights switching off. Matt comes home from a long trip and starts suggesting that he and Martha could move things even further, perhaps move to Cincinnati or have kids. But as Martha's premonitions continue to come true, she gets more and more anxious and she leaves the apartment screaming. And then we end at the Capri Lounge where Mary has a drink with the Foley's. They're about to leave town, but they share some stories which don't seem to add up. Mary realizes that Fred and Fiona are actually actors that Dennis has hired to make an impression on Mary. Dennis is actually really an orphan. 
Dennis excuses his lies on the spot, blaming his actions on the great love that he feels for Mary. Then he presses Mary on whether or not she loves him. And the parts of her that want to say yes and the parts of her that want to say no have a battle. And at that ends in a stalemate with Mary asking if she can get back to him. Everyone last week really just wrenched up my emotions and I, I have lots and lots of different feelings going on. We are at T minus five weeks to the end of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. I expect things will be escalating here on out, so let us begin. Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! Screwdriver! Razor! Pliers. Nuts. <laughs> Is that the way you help an inventor? Making jokes? Oh, come on, grumpy. I just thought we needed a laugh. Yeah, well, we can laugh later when the dough is rolling in, and when George Shumway's name is in the history books with Thomas Edison, and when Johnny Carson breaks for a commercial and holds up my bug gun. And when Mother comes home. You do want Mother back. I want, I want the trigger assembly. Trigger assembly. Well, I don't know. <sighs> she's a pain, and she's bumble-brained, and she's silly at times, but I do love her dearly. And, and, and my bug gun. So you do want her back? Oh, I don't necessarily want her back. Not after what she did to me. I mean, made me sink so low. Begging, pleading, wearing a tie. No, after what she's done to me, I got my pride. I am back. Well, I can see that. What's the matter? You need a frying pan? A cup of sugar? Yeah, I thought you never wanted to see Daddy again as for as long as you live. Kathy, don't make things more difficult for me than they are already. Did you hear me, George? I am back. Oh, yeah? Why? Is it the lure of my fame? The fact that I'm acquiring a fortune? Well, if you must know, it is because you are doomed. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> what? We are all doomed. Were. But I am back now. So we are saved. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to buy that story. You can go peddle your paper somewhere else. I know a gold digger when I see one. Oh, George, I am not interested in digging your gold. Why, well, I wouldn't even be here if Standing Cow hadn't said that we were all doomed if I did not come back. Super glue. Now, come on, Daddy. Look how sorry Mother is for running away with Mac. Huh? I am not sorry. Yes, you are. And, and Daddy will forgive and forget and let you come home. In a sow's ear. Daddy, this is my doomed we're talking about, isn't it, Ma? Mmm. I'm going to tell you... I'm going to tell you something, Martha. When you left me, I thought my life was going to end. El finito. But then I found a purpose and a reason for living. I became an inventor. A man with a mission. And now, that's all I need. Benzoin. Then? <laughs> then I will go... I will go. I came here to save lives. But if you wish to be doomed, yes, then fine. I will go out that door. I wonder how far I will get before I keel over. Now, stop it, Mother, right now. Daddy, look, I'm getting scared. I mean, I know this, this standing cow stuff sounds crazy, but maybe there is some truth to it. 
And anyway, you both want to get back together and you both know it. <laughs> <laughs> that is just your silly pride talking. Now look at her. Look at her. Look at her face. Look how she needs you. Huh? She's desperate for you. <clears throat> she, she's miserable without you. And, 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 and she would be... She, look, do you want to put her through any more suffering? Well, I did miss you. But, but, but just a little bit. Oh, no, he was just pining away. George, you pine? Oh, crazy with pining. Uh, oh, George, I didn't, I didn't know you pined. I never thought you cared very much at all. That's one of the reasons why I went away. Well, I did care. <laughs> and damn, they went crazy while you were gone. I couldn't wait for you to come back. So there, I said it. And I hope you're happy now. Oh, George. Oh, thank God. Now we're not doomed. Does this mean, George, does this mean that things are going to be different? Oh, <laughs> I guess I am happy about it. Uh, George, I didn't mean to hurt you. I guess we do have a lot to talk about. We do. Mm -hmm. And we will. <laughs> of course... After you fix dinner on the table, and I finish my bug gun. Smell the air. Smell that air. Oh, listen to the birds. You hear them? Yeah. Listen to that. Isn't that great? You know what I did? I even brought out our good silverware, and I brought out a wedding china. Mm -hmm. Where's the food? What food? Well, where's breakfast? Well, at least we have everything that's important to us. Yeah, yeah. Us. Could we talk before we eat? Well, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Listen, would you mind if I just had maybe a little saltine to nibble on? Uh, oh, sure, coffee? sure. No. I'm sorry, Tom, but that would be wrong. A saltine would be wrong. I really wanted to make a very elegant breakfast here, and the right thing would just be some freshly squoze and concentrated orange juice. I mean, after we talk. Yeah. It's just a friendly talk. I mean, it's nothing heavy or anything like that. It's just an everyday pleasant conversation, that's all. <laughs> sure. Sure, fine with me, sure. So, um... What, what are you going to have, eggs or what? Eggs Benedict, Tom. Oh, eggs Benedict. You mean with the, uh... Ham under the eggs. And the English muffin under the ham. <laughs> great, 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 good. I'll get No, it's okay. I'll serve you. Okay. After we talk. But we just did. Oh, no, that was just the introduction. I, th I think I really understand. You see, we've been married so long that it's not surprising that we don't have anything to talk about. You see, we've used up most of the subjects, you know. <laughs> do you think we've run dry or do you think this is just for the breakfast meal? I'm not sure, I think. Hiya, gang. Uh, how's it going? Never mind. 
What am I fighting? I'm just so glad you're here, sweetheart. This is exactly what we need. This is just a nice family breakfast to remind us of what a nice family we are. Where's the chow? Oh, forget the food, Heather. I just want this to be a family breakfast, and what I want is a sense of togetherness. Hev, Daddy and I were trying to uh, come up with something to talk about. Maybe you can help us. You know, maybe even a subject from school. What do you think, Tom? Fine, fine with me, yeah. Let's talk about your marriage. The kids at school say it's crumbling. Oh, come on, what do kids know? Yeah, really, Heather, I mean, everything is fine. Some of the kids think Sergeant Foley's lousing it up again. I uh, have. Uh, do you think you can come up uh, with uh, something else? Anything else on your mind at all? If not, I think that uh, we've talked enough for the week. It was a good talk. A short talk, but a good talk. You see that? You see that? Even the kids know about it. Even the kids. Daddy, please. My peers aren't kids. We're grown up enough to know when a marriage has had it. Besides, what same woman wouldn't go for Dennis Foley? Heather, I told you this has been a great talk and you have made a wonderful contribution. Now I just think it's time for you to go to school, that's all. But where's breakfast? I'm hungry. Sorry, Heather, ran out of time. I'll tell you what. One, we take your breakfast, we'll put it on a plate, and you'll eat it when you go to school, okay? Just try not to fall, sweetheart. That we don't need. Oh, by the way, if you're planning on keeping your marriage together just for me, don't bother. I don't believe it. I just don't believe I heard what she said. Well, at least she's passed through her shy stage. And go. Uh, no, darling. No, honey. This is for you. Little berries and, and uh, nuts. There you go. See, Charlie, I told you he'd want a steak, just like us. Well, he can't have one, honey. We're trying to retrain the boy for the wild. And there just ain't no such animal as barbecued steak in the wilderness. Uh, Johnny Doe. Hey. Hey, don't do that! <sighs> Johnny. Honey. I'm telling you, this just breaks my heart to pieces for us to be starving our own boy. I mean, especially when he was left here, as you know, as a sign by you-know-who from on high. Johnny Doe, you pick up them nuts and berries. You pick them up right now. That is your food. That's your dinner. Now go on, boy, do it. It ain't right, Charlie. It just ain't right. I mean, what kind of parents are we? Give up civilizing our boy like that? Honey, we're the best kind. Because we know when to let go. Now, come here, boy. Come here. Time is not the problem, sweetheart. I mean, suppose he comes up dead before he ever learns our manners, if he ever does. Well, what if Bigfoot doesn't want him back and he gets dead out in the forest all alone by himself? Honey, you just don't have enough faith in the Sasquatch. You don't. Bigfoot will welcome this boy back with open, loving arms. All we got to do is undo some of the civilizing damage we've done first. Right? Well, Charlie, can't he just have this little old piece of steak No, here? honey, he can't have the steak. Hey! 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 Go, hey. Johnny! Hey! Come on here, come on! Love what it. are you laughing at? I love it. Darling, it's survival of the fittest. Don't you see? He won that steak fair and square. It's a law of the jungle. I hurt my foot. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> that boy will be all right.
so hard to get used to the way you do things, you know? I don't know, maybe you're right in telling them that you love me. It's just like, maybe you're right in renting out those people to be your parents for a couple of days like that and lying to me about it. I don't know, maybe it's just my upbringing that's getting in the way here. I wish I'd known you when you were a kid. Because I wish I'd, we'd known each other all our lives. And I wish we'd gone on our first date together. And I wish we had gone steady in high school. Why? Well, I, I didn't go on any dates then. Tom's the only person I ever went out with. What if it had been me? <laughs> You're being silly, Dennis. Oh, haven't you ever been silly? Of course I am. And I'm funny, too. I mean, sometimes, like, Tom will tell a joke, and I just laugh, and I laugh and laugh. I think that's probably, you know, when I'm at my funniest. See, you don't really know Tom. I mean, he could be so funny. To laugh with Tom the way you laugh with me? See, Tom is the kind of man that you marry. There are two different kinds of men. I mean, there's the kind of man that you fool around with, and then there's the kind of man that you marry. And like you, you're, uh, you know, a fool around. I'll bet you never fooled around. Well, it, it was uh, never important. You're wrong. Don't tell me that. What if it had been me? If we'd gone steady in high school? I don't know. Maybe it would have been different if it were now. I don't know. Things can be different. I mean, that is the whole point of what I'm saying. I don't know what... I don't know what you want me to say. Do you want me to say that I love you more than anyone? Do you want me to tell you that I love you more than Tom? I want you to say what you feel. I think you should go now. Is that what you feel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you lying? No. Thank you. I know what you're thinking about. I do, huh? What? Foley and Mary. So you know, what, you know about that too, right? Everybody knows about it. The only thing everybody doesn't know is why you're not doing anything about it. I mean, why do you just slip out of the house and come here and mope? I am, I'm doing something about it. I'm thinking about it. That's not doing anything. I mean, thinking is one thing and doing something is another. I mean, do you think Foley is sitting home thinking about stealing your wife? No, he's doing everything and anything he can. And, and, well, that's the problem. Yeah, no, I know, I know that's a problem, I know. I mean, he is fighting for Mary, and you're not fighting back. You're wasting time. I don't know what to do. I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how to fight back. I mean, I'm not used to doing that. I mean, hell, I've, I've known Mary. Mary and me have known each other since we were kids. You know, and everything just kind of fell into place as we grew up, you know. Mm -hmm. Marriage, home, and Heather, and... You know, everything was just fine, just going along just, just fine until all of a sudden Foley came along and I, I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know what to do. I do. Wait, let me look. 
You have to take action. Take that off. You have to assert yourself. That's better. Let me see. Oh. should unbutton another button here. Unbutton another button? Yeah. And do you have to wear undershirts? Take the undershirt off. Off? And why don't yeah. you brush your hair up like around your neck? Brush this hair? Yeah. And um, do you have any tighter pants? You see, you have to be aggressive. You have to play Foley's game. And you have to, you have to fight. She's mine already. I shouldn't have to fight for her. This is not the Tom I used to idolize in high school. I mean, the, the jock of Fernwood High, he was a winner. Well, oh, Jesus, you know, this is not high school, Kath. This is not a baseball or basketball game. Heck, I, uh, you know, I just had fun, man. I just, uh, I didn't care whether I won or not. It was just uh, playing my best. That's all that mattered. Yeah, but you're not playing your best in the marriage. <sighs> Life is not a baseball or basketball game. I mean, I don't even what the, what the hell the rules are. There's a lot more at stake here. That's why I gotta, you know, think things through. I gotta think them out. That's the problem. You are thinking too much. You're thinking. You're being depressing, and you're moping around. And and that's not very attractive to a wife or appealing, especially with someone like um, Sergeant Foley on her tail. Well, why should I have to be appealing? Why should I? I mean, if Mary loved me, she would. She wouldn't even give one hoot about about Foley. Listen, you're doing all this thinking, right? Did you ever stop to think that maybe she wants you to stop her? I mean, did you ever stop to think that maybe if you did it, uh, it would help her ego to sh and show her that you care? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'll think about that. You do that. You think about it. But don't waste too much time thinking about it because you won't have anything left to think about. Pay for that, okay? See ya. Well, y'all, I believe this might be the thesis statement for our final five weeks of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We have hit the ground floor and we're hitting it hard. This episode starts with Kathy and George working the bug gun but then we know that george misses martha that's something that he has exhibited so many times over the last several months or at least since martha has left you know a month and a half or so martha returns and it's not because she loved george more than mac at least not according to her but because the omen was hanging over her head and I'm not sure if Kathy was playing into that or if she really feared the omen because we haven't seen her react to the omen at all. She did say some things that made me feel like she might have been taking the omen seriously, but maybe she was playing into Martha's fears. It's not actually the omen that changes Martha's mind. It was realizing that George actually missed her, which he has. He really has missed her this entire time it was hearing that george pined for her that changed her mind i don't know if we'll see mac again i i'm kind of curious i i don't think that he and kathy should get back together and we'll have more to say about that uh, as we end this episode but it looks like george and martha shumway are back together again and maybe just maybe mildly about the same as they were before. And then the episode calls into question what Tom and Mary's relationship actually is. They're a couple that have been together so long that they have run out of things to say. That's really troubling. Who would want to be with someone who you had nothing to say to? That's what was happening in this scene. Mary and Tom are thinking about what they could talk to each other about. I mean, there's so many different topics in the world. Talk about any of them. I at first thought that this conversation was going to be about their relationship, but it looked to me as the scene progressed that no, they were just looking to have any conversation and they just couldn't. They had nothing to say. And then Heather comes out and in this arc of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, it really looks like Heather is just there to make Mary and Tom hate each other. 
right, to bring up Dennis. She is in love with Dennis. She is the Dennis shipper. Well, maybe not. Maybe she doesn't care if Mary gets with Dennis, but she certainly likes Dennis better than Tom in this case. And apparently all of the kids in the school do too. I don't understand why the middle school kids are worshipping a local uh, sergeant at the Fernwood PD. But in this case, Mary and Tom don't have anything to talk about, and Heather just shoves that in their face and apparently she doesn't care if they get divorced earlier in the series heather kind of wanted them to get divorced so she could have two parents giving presents for i don't know that that old sitcom trope pretty recently she said she didn't want to be the product of a broken home but here she is just trying to shatter it and i don't understand where that comes from other than that this story isn't really about heather it's about tom and mary and their lack of common ground. I still will stand by my statement that Tom loves Mary and Mary loves Tom, but maybe it's not a love that's filled with anything for them. Then we get a brief visit with the Haggers and JD, and Charlie is doing his best to prepare the boy for going back out into nature, and you know, to be honest, it doesn't seem like JD is as intent on going out into nature as Charlie and Loretta thought. Because JD wants that steak. And, you know, nuts and berries. Uh, Yogi Bear would definitely not like nuts and berries. He wants that picnic basket. And this is the thing, because Charlie is set on getting the boy back out into nature, getting the boy back with... Bigfoot, and, well, last time the word Bigfoot was mentioned, JD got a shudder, and now he just throws the nuts and berries away and grabs some of the steak so he can eat in the room. And maybe this is, like I said, this is the ground floor of where we are. Maybe this is Charlie and Loretta realizing that JD is just fine where he is. This is more life than I have seen him have. He was sick most of last week, and like the first half of last week and then after that it was really more everyone talking about how depressed he was but he seemed pretty lively today so as charlie said i think the boy's gonna be just fine so now what's the next step is he gonna be going to school he had some really rough issues there we don't know that's something yet to be discovered and then we get two bits uh, we get two perspectives on Mary and Tom in their relationship from other people, right? So Dennis is there to push on Mary to say, you don't really love Tom as much as you love me. That's the question that he wanted answered and he pushes it. And Mary sets up a boundary and he still pushes. So when I talked about last you know i've talked about many times dennis pushing past mary's boundaries one aspect that i would look at now at the as the resolution of that little scene that happened maybe he's pushing past her boundary because he sees something truer behind it that mary actually does love him more than she loves tom i have so many feelings about dennis that are negative so it's hard for me to talk about dennis being honest but in some way this could be him pursuing something that is true right his pursuit of truth gets past mary's instinct to hide things and as we have seen throughout this series mary always wants to hide what she's really feeling i don't know if that's a good match we can only speculate what life would be like if they end up choosing each other as Dennis leaves, he plants another kiss on her lips. He's kissed her quite a lot. I think it feels like more than season one. Because it's like every time he sees her, he kisses her. As he has asked this question of whether Mary loves him more than Tom, she says no, and he asks if she's lying. And she says she's not lying. And then he leaves. And she says 
she's lying. I can talk about how much Dennis violates so many things that I find you know, ethical. The whole thing with Fred and Fiona, right, those two actors that he hired to convince Mary that his life was better than it is. Among so many other instances, but that's the most recent thing. Well, then we get to see Tom with Kathy. And in this case, Kathy, who admitted once that she had a crush on Tom and refers to that crush again, is still pushing Tom toward Mary. And last week, Tom was honestly ready to give up on her, on Mary. This week, he says he's doing something and that doing something is thinking about it, which is, I agree with Kathy, doing and thinking ain't the same thing. This is definitely not the time to think about it. This is the time that someone is literally attacking your life and your home, I'm talking about Dennis in this case, and to defend it. Again, it's not to say that Mary can't have friends, but literally Dennis is trying to take Mary away from Tom. And that's a question, right? Because Mary could choose Dennis or she could choose Tom. Kathy refers to the old Tom, right? Well, sorry, the younger Tom when Tom was in high school and how he would fight for the game and play to win. And now he is not fighting for the game. And the, some of the things that Tom said, I don't remember verbatim what he said, but some of the things Tom said, there was something to the effect of, why should I be fighting? Well, because this is your life. This is more important than a basketball game or a baseball game, Tom. This is what's going to be happening to you for the rest of your life. So maybe this is where you fight. I say that as a pacifist, me, pacifist, but sometimes you have to make a stand. And that stand doesn't have to be fisticuffs, right? That's not what Dennis needs, I think, maybe, I don't know. There was the return of the gun. I don't want to see that come into play. I want to see Tom standing up for the relationship by actually participating in it, by having the hard conversation, not the, like, yeah, I think they probably need the conversation they couldn't have earlier in the first scene of the episode, but they also need to have a hard conversation about what is them, what they are together. And that's something that they haven't been having last week they were gonna have a real talk and then the factory fellas kind of got in the way but kathy is encouraging and tom has something to do more than think about now this week instead of dealing with questions of the week as we count forward to the end of the series i thought i'd look at kathy shumway's list of lovers so it's Monday today. We'll start back in the beginning with Larry Kabibian, who at the first episode of the series was the Armenian bartender that she was dating. He wasn't named until season two, but he was a presence in the show, not actually seen. He was off stage all the time. But Kathy Shumway certainly has gotten around more than her sister Mary, and the first guy that we knew that she gave attention to was an unseen fella named Larry Kabibian. We did later see her making out with another guy at Loretta's first recording session. I don't remember that fella's name, but I thought he should deserve a mention too. We will be moving forward through Kathy Shumway's list of lovers tomorrow, and hey, wow. We are getting there. We have five weeks left or 24 episodes after today. <sighs> I can see that things are going to be interesting. Thank you so much for watching with me, everyone. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions down in the comments. Thank you for philosophizing with me. 
and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.